In real life, it's difficult to observe all the feeding relationships of a community. In this activity, students assume the roles of the animals they've been studying and simulate their feeding behavior in a game of food chain tag. In doing so, they gain a better understanding of food chain relationships. Students also learn what characteristics help both predator and prey animals to survive. A predator refers to an animal that hunts and eats other animals. Prey is the term for the animal that is hunted and eaten. In Activity 11, students act out feeding relationships among crickets, anoles, and owls and discuss how it feels to be the prey or predator. This activity will take about 50 minutes. The vocabulary introduced is predator and prey. From the kit, you will need the food chain game chart, yarn, masking tape, index cards, popcorn, and reclosable zip bags. You will also need crayons, hole punch, marker, scissors, and a copy of Activity Sheet 11 for each student. For this activity, arrange for the use of a playground or gymnasium for the game. Label 18 index cards, cricket, nine cards, anol, and five cards, owl. Have students use crayons to color the cards or use colored index cards. Punch a hole in the top corner of each card. Cut a piece of yarn one meter or three feet long for each student and then pop two large bowls of popcorn. Write grass, cricket, a knoll, and owl on the board and ask the students, how can we make a food chain out of these plants and animals? Students should draw an arrow from the energy source to the energy receiver or consumer. Write predator on the board and explain that a predator is the term for an animal that hunts and eats another animal. Ask students what is another term they have learned for an animal that eats other animals? Secondary consumer. Next, write prey on the board and explain that prey is a term for animals that are eaten by other animals. Point out that prey could either be primary consumers, such as plant eaters, or secondary consumers. Tell the students they're going to play a food chain tag game. Give each student a card and a piece of yarn and have them thread the yarn through the card and tie a knot. Then place the name tag around their necks. So Kathy, I'm going to be an anole and you're going to be a cricket. Okay. 18 students will play the role of crickets. Nine will be anoles and five will assume the roles of owls. The purpose for each animal is to take or tag the kind of animal it eats. Take the students to the game area, remind them to bring their name tags, and take along the popped corn, masking tape, food chain game chart, plastic bags, and a marker. At the playing area, you will tape or display the food chain game chart in a visible location. Scatter popcorn over the area to represent the food for the crickets. Designate a safe area where students can only stay for 20 seconds at a time, while predators must be five steps away. Designate a timeout area and explain that when a student is tagged, he or she must go to the timeout and stay until this round or that round is over. 
direct students to put name tags around their necks, then explain the rules. Crickets collect the popcorn, which would represent grass, and put it in their bags, which are stomachs. Anoles will try to tag the crickets. When the crickets have been tagged, they will give their bags to of food and name cards to the anole that tagged them. Then the crickets go to the timeout area. Owls will try to tag the anoles. When the tagged, when tagged, the anoles will give their bags of food and name tag cards to the owl that tagged him or her. And then the anole goes to the timeout area. Tell students that they will not be able to enter the playing area until their animal name is called. Remind students that they may go to the safe shelter, but not for more than 20 seconds. To begin the game, distribute the plastic bags to crickets announce the start of the game, and crickets begin collecting popcorn in their bags. After 30 seconds, tell anoles that they may begin tagging the crickets and taking their tags and bags. After 30 seconds, tell owls that they may begin tagging the anoles and taking their tags and bags. Play the game for several minutes and then stop the round. Take a census of which animals remain in the game and record the information on the posted game chart. Collect all the animal name tags and redistribute them trying to give the students a different animal. Have students scatter the popcorn over the area again. Repeat the game two more times recording the results after each round. Remove the chart, return to the classroom, and display the chart. Distribute the activity sheet 11 to each student and have the students respond to each of the questions one through seven. Kathy, let's review. Which animals were the predators? Uh, the owl and the anoles. Which animals were the prey? Well, the anoles and the crickets. What was it like to be a cricket or an anole, which were the prey? Well, it was probably really scary to be the cricket because you had anoles chasing you, and then anoles had to worry about owls catching them. Okay. What was it like to be an owl? Well, as an owl, I didn't have to worry about, I didn't have to look over my shoulder for anybody hunting me, but um, then I only had certain limited food choices, so... <laughs> What happened to each animal to be successful? Well, they had to be quick or find a hiding place or camouflage themselves, you know, in a bush or something. Okay. Point out that the same adaptations are necessary for animals to survive. How could the game be changed to make it more like real life? Well, that you could... Um camouflage things or hide them under things or give them a longer time. Okay. Were all the animals in any one group eaten? Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't have any animals in one group eaten during our game, and it's probably unlikely that that would happen. Okay. What would happen in real life if all of the prey animals were eaten? Well, if the owls only ate one specific thing, then they probably would die. But if they had several choices of things, then they probably would have a better chance of survival. But Okay. In nature, there are usually many more prey animals than predators, so it's very rare that all the prey animals are eaten. By assuming the roles of different members of the food chain in this food chain tag game, Students come to a better understanding of food chain relationships and the trend toward a balance in nature. They also discover what characteristics help both predator and prey animals to survive. Have students empty the popcorn out of the plastic bags and return the bags, masking tape, and name tags to the kit. Dispose or recycle 
the food chain game chart. In the Delta Science Reader, review page four and read page 14 about wolves and moose on Isle Royale.